Well, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and uh, the subject of today is we're going to be talking about how to reach 5D consciousness as well as comparing different teachers, gurus with one another and their methods and meditations and uh, uh, also uh, which way should we uh, uh, pursue in order to reach our spiritual goals. So it's a very good subject. I'm glad you, uh, Lynn, you brought it up and I will be talking about that. Uh, for the moment, we're just going to be doing a 15-minute meditation. <laughs> and uh, what I would like you to do is this is going to be a guided meditation. And uh, we've done this before. Um, what we're going to do is you're just going to, as you close your eyes, I would like you, you can watch me for the moment. I would like you to see your sacrum uh, is connected to the planet and it's, it roots going down uh, into planet Earth. And uh, as you're breathing, you're breathing in through your roots from your sacrum, you are bringing light and you're bringing prana. And the light you're bringing in is, is you can just see what this light, light the color is. Um, let it be organic, so I don't want to force it. So when you close your eyes and you breathe in, see that, is this a golden light coming? Is this a green light coming? Just check it out for yourself. See what color light, as you're breathing in, is you're pulling into your body. And is it purple? Whatever color it is. We don't want to force it. We want it to be uh, natural and organic. So you breathe in. And you see the light coming in through your sacrum. And the light slowly is moving up through your spine. And gently make yourself available by bringing your focus on your spine, spinal cord, and see this light, this energy is gently moving through your body. And it's warming up your body. You are feeling warmth and love. And as this energy is spiraling up, moving up, slowly it reaches your heart, coming to your heart chakra. And you can feel the warmth and the love which is available here. Don't force anything, just allow it to happen. Allow the energy to gently move up to reach your head. Slowly, slowly is coming up, going to your throat, coming to your head, coming to your third eye. And shooting out from your crown chakra. And this life force, energy, light, love, has connected you, is using you as a bridge 
of the wisdom from the planet Earth traveling through you, connecting to the universal life force, universal wisdom. And your body is merely a conduit of love and light. Love and light is traveling through you. The light is taking over. Taking over all of your senses. And your body is dissolving into the light. It's the disintegration of a body into the light body. You're losing all senses of any boundaries between the physical and the energetic world. You are here, you are present, but you have no boundaries, no physical boundaries. You're suspended in the air, lost at last. yet present. without forcing anything, trying, simply allow this energy to do what it wants to do, not try to manipulate anything. This light has taken all over you and now is shining 
through your heart, forcing its way out of your heart into your surrounding. The entire existence being touched by this love, transforming anything that it comes across. Nothing can resist its power of transformation. And it's coming from you. It's coming from you because you allow it to be. You're allowing yourself to be the vessel a conduit of love and light. You're allowing to God to operate through your physical body and expresses its force. In a very high magnitude, effective and transformative. As you are here, relaxed, completely dissolved into the oneness, suspended in the space, limitless, timeless, without any boundaries. And you are pure. I would like you to put your hands on your heart and feel the presence, feel the love, the love of God, the love of the Spirit, the love which is here surrounding you and the love which is emanating from you, connecting every particle in the universe with each other. You are completely still and silent and present and available. You have come to the purity of your own essence. Pure presence, presence, here and now. Where there's no room for fear or anxiety because you're completely connected to the source of life.
You know that you are and you will always be because you have no limitations. You have no beginning, no end. You were not born and you will not die. You are here, present. You are the presence, which is always here. Cannot be touched, manipulated, bent, changed to anything. It's always here. You are always present and here. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can touch the purity of your essence. And I would like you to repeat after me and be very sincere in this. can repeat after me. I love myself. And when you say I love myself, just see, pay attention to your heart chakra and see that the quality of the vibration within and surrounding you changes when you do say this. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself and everybody. Slowly come back. Come back here. <clears throat> Come back to your center again. And as you can see, as you go, your attention diverts inside and it turns inwards. And as your attention goes inward and you let go of this imaginary will you let go of this illusion that you are in control. 
that you are a human being separated from the source. You let go of that. That you're limited. It's just a simple 20 minute meditation. You allow and you let go. And that's what happens. And you let light to take over. You let love to take over. And then you see the magic that takes place and affects you. And it's affecting everything else in your field. Silence, love, comfort immediately takes over. Warmth takes over. You become very calm and quiet. And all that blah, 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 blah that you're hearing disappears. And quite often you tell yourself, I wish I could stay in this state all the time. Well, let me tell you something. This state is your true nature all the time. This is the background of who you are. This is who you are. Pure stillness, calm, quiet, meditative, centered, expanse, expansive. That's who you really are. This other one is what you think you are, and it's not the real you. That's why it feels weird. That's why you feel weird in your body and you feel weird in your surrounding and there's weirdness in, in life because you're forced to imagine something that you are not. So it doesn't feel right, it's weird. But when you come back to the purity of your own essence, it's effortless And it's very comfortable. And that's what we are teaching here. And that's the goal is the sharing is to help you recognize who you really are. That's my mission. To really help you come to this place that you are free you're complete, you're not needy, there's nothing missing, there's no room for fear, anxiety, and worry. They all come and go, they're passing, but they're not real. And you are beyond all of that. And if you hang in there long enough on the course, you will discover this 100% for yourself and you will be living in this place all the time. Not something that comes and goes. It will be all the time, constantly, because that's how it should be. It should be permanent and constant. If it comes and goes, then your realization is not complete. It has to be constant. Now, our friend, uh, one of our friends brought up to my attention regarding entering into five, fifth dimension. And how do we do that? How do we come and raise our consciousness to the our raise our vibrations to fifth dimensional consciousness as well as uh, comparing 
maybe my ways of doing things with another guru or generally comparing different teachers with one another. Um, basically, my, uh, I've said this before and I re say it again. Uh, of course, uh, different times with different people we've talked about this and uh, is you have to trust your your intuitive knowing you have to trust your intuition and your intuition leads you to the right place and that's something we are not being taught from from childhood and hopefully in future generations for the indigo children the star children and the parents who have more conscious and they've come to the path they will encourage their children to really follow their heart because we do have this powerful gps within our heart and our inner gps always leads us to the right place and speaks the truth and when it comes to different teachers and different gurus i'm completely an advocate of it's healthy if you try different teachers and different gurus and different methods it's healthy for your spiritual growth for you to see who you feel connected with to see who you resonate with and what teaching is right for you and that can also change in the future because you can outgrow a teaching you can outgrow a guru and you can be with someone for a number of years or a period of time and then get to a point that uh, they're no longer serving you or their teachings you get bored or they're not taking you to where you feel like you need to go um, and then you move on now today there is the danger of that there is a lot out there and it could be very, very confusing, especially for the younger people uh, because there's so much going on. There's so much availability on, on because of the internet and the technology we have. There's a lot of stuff out there. So there's a lot of blah, 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 blah. So what do I do? Do I do this or do I do that? This guy is saying this and that guy is saying this. So it's very confusing. Again, my suggestion is that you pay attention to your heart. What feels right for you? And stay with that. It doesn't matter what my friend is telling me. It doesn't matter what I read where. And something's telling me do this or do that or go Oh, look at that teacher. He has 100,000 followers. And now look at this guy. He only has 200 followers. So I'm going to go after the guy who has 200,000 or 100,000 followers. You cannot measure the value and the quality of a teacher by the number of their followers. That's not how you measure that. You have to pay very much attention to that. How big and known is a teacher is not an indication of whether they're right for you or not. You have to also understand that we're still in the third dimension and a lot of spiritual teachers are very much affected with what they see. So quite often we get fooled by our eyes. So we see something's big or shiny or elaborate and we fall for it, for it. But when we go deeper inside, we realize it's empty or it's not for you. So you cannot measure the value and the quality of a spiritual teacher by how many people are around them, how many 
Instagram followers they have or Facebook or YouTube followers they have. That doesn't mean anything. You need to investigate to see if their teachings resonate with you. That's the most important thing. And go with that. When I did come across Papaji, Punjaji, in India, in my early days, there was only 100, 150 people at a time sitting with Papaji. 100 to 150. So every day we went to satsang and we sat with Papa. There was between 100 to 150 people sitting there. But in the meantime, if you went to Osho's Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh Ashram in Pune, there were 10,000, 15,000 sannyasins sitting with Osho. And if you went down to Bangalore to sit with Sai Baba, there was a million followers sitting with Sai Baba. But I, had, I was not attracted to Sai Baba. I was really attracted to Papaji. Papaji was my guru. He was my sat guru. And he was the one that his teachings really resonate with, with my heart. Even though I went and checked all these other people, this guy is my guy because he speaks the language of my heart. And he has something. He has arrived at a place that I want that. Because the man had come to silence. He was very still and very silent. He was at that place. And nothing seemed like could move Papaji. No storm, no political situation, nothing could affect this man. This man had come to inner peace. And he was emanate, em, emanating that to his surrounding. And I wanted that. I wanted what he had. And I was very attracted to it. So I went for it. And years and years after that, I'm still very attracted to his way and his way he was teaching and that teaching. And I incorporated the Advaita Vedanta teaching into what I teach. So I hope I answered uh, that part of your question, Lynn. So now I'm going to talk about your second part of the question, uh, how to reach fifth dimension. That is a loaded question. So, so let's talk about this. What is 5D? What is fifth dimension? Oh, before I move on, okay, let me just uh, a little bit talk about this issue of different teachers, different gurus. Um, there is um, naturally we develop some kind of prejudice when we have our teacher, spiritual teacher. And I have seen this in a lot of different spiritual groups that I have encountered that this uh, sense of ownership or sense of uh, protection uh, gets developed about our spiritual teacher. And then we get to this point that my teacher is better than your teacher. Uh, or this cult is being uh, developed that, okay, we're all wearing orange. Uh, we're all having satsang. Uh, we're getting together two times a week. We're doing some uh, um, chantings and uh, we're all wearing white, we all have our hair long or short, uh, we're vegetarian, uh, we're celibate, we have renounced sex or any sexual activities or whatever. 
And so what happens is that all of a sudden we are creating separation and we're se separating ourselves as better and more holy in comparison to everybody else who is not following our teacher and is not doing our rituals. And you have to be very careful with that because that's another set of spiritual conditioning which is replacing your old conditioning. You're replacing your old conditioning or whatever it was. Let's say that you're in the mainstream world. You believe in Donald Trump. You believe in McDonald's. You believe in corporations. You believe in uh, mainstream medicine, blah, 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 blah. And now you have given that up and you have become spiritual and you're wearing in a certain way, you dress up in a certain way, you have picked up new rituals. You're meditating, which is nice, and now you're not eating meat and you've become vegan, or you've given up this or given up that, and but now you still prejudice that anybody else who's not following your way, they're unconscious and they don't get it. And this happens very often in spiritual communities. So we give up a set of conditioning and we replace it with another set of conditioning, spiritual conditioning, and which is very dangerous. And I'm completely opposed to that. Is because the goal in this teaching is to help you become free, not to give up a set of conditioning and replacing it with another set of replace conditioning. The idea is to become free. So you are free from any conditioning. Freedom is the goal. And if you're going to get into another, another dogmatic situation that requires doing certain rituals, then you haven't freed yourself. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing the rituals and being a part of a, a spiritual group. But if you become prejudiced about it and come to this area that you think your teacher and your way is better than others, then you're trapped. And I'm included in that. Okay, I'm including myself into it. If you think our way and this is better than others, then you're trapped because there is no better or worse. It's just what works for you at, at your, where you're at in your evolutionary process, in your awakening process, where you're at. And it's always in this moment. And it can always change from one thing to another thing. But yes, there are teachings and teachers that are more refined. As you're waking up and as you're rising your vibrations to a higher frequency, you will start to develop less patience for bullshit you begin to see the bullshit. So you lose your patience for it. I understand that because you're getting more refined, more focused, and you are seeking spiritual teachers who are really focused on one point. And they're helping you to get to, to, the, to where you want to get to. That I understand. And that's the correct way. But be careful. Be aware that you don't allow your mind to bring you to this place of saying, my teacher and my way is better 
and more superior in comparison to that guy and that group because that kind of thinking is going to create separation and you have separated yourself from the whole the reality is that there is no separation you are all of it you are a part of all of everything that you see you sense and you experience and those who are ignorant they are a part of yourself it's an aspect of yourself so the mind would like if the ego would like to come and say this is better no it's better in this moment for you it's the right way for you in this moment So it's a dangerous area that you meet, you need to be very aware of and not get caught into it. So Rosalie, just one minute. So I've seen this happen a lot of times. Uh, I've been a victim of it myself. Um, I've been casted out of different groups uh, because I wouldn't play the game. And I was never anybody's soldier. I always went my own way. And my teacher always told me, be a lion. And where the lion goes, he cuts his own path. So, and that always stayed with me. And I say that to my female audience, be a lioness. And where the lioness goes, she cuts her own path. Ultimately, you follow your own heart and your heart will set you free. And all the other teachers and guides, they show up on your way to put you, to show you the way, which way is the way. But there is a point that you're going to even have to let go of your teacher and walk your own way. Respect is there, but you're going to have to walk your own way on yourself. So... So speaking of that, um, uh, our friend Lynn mentioned about different kind of meditations, uh, comparing uh, some other gurus, teachers with my, my teachings. Again, you have to see what works for you. Uh, there is no really comparison because whatever I teach with my meditations or methods uh, works for you. It may not work for someone else and they may not feel any 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 connection to it so what they're doing is fine what you're doing is fine and don't even get into in your head trying to get into this game with them and saying that oh my way is better than yours this, this is like a five six year old child children trying to being being children mine is better than yours so don't get into that game move on and do your own thing so as far as entering into fifth dimension what is fifth dimension let's talk about that first before we go any further fifth dimension let's say imagine that we're only having ocean there is no land there is no sand there is no mountains there's no sky it's only water it's only blue turquoise water it's beautiful it's yummy but that's the only thing there is like Caribbean turquoise water, but there's only water and there's nothing else to compare it to. You don't have a sky as a contrast or there is no white sand, sandy beaches to compare the water to. It's only water. So 
and it's a little bit difficult for the mind to imagine something without anything to compare it to. So fifth dimension is a unified field of oneness, is a unified field of love. It is a state, a place of presence, pure presence, isness is, but there is nothing for it to compare itself to. It's just is. And it's difficult, almost impossible, for the human mind to grab this because the mind needs to compare this to something. That's how the mind works. It needs to compare one thing to another for it to understand it. So the mind cannot grasp what I'm talking about. So now let's imagine that for a moment. Close your eyes for one moment and imagine that there is only beautiful turquoise water and nothing else. See if you can have that visualization. Now, that's fifth dimension. There is no duality. Duality is, I mean, there has to be two separate things. Now, the fifth dimensional state that when we are doing our work, those of you who've been with me, especially if you've been at one of my workshops or one of my retreats, at the retreats, we, because we spend more time together and we prepare ourselves to enter into the fifth dimensional consciousness. And we have experienced that many, many different times. That you arrive at the place, and maybe you, you touched it, you've experienced it when we did the meditation. And you arrive at a place that the mind comes to silence. That there is absolutely no thought. You are here. You're alive. You're breathing but there's no thinking. It's just still, you're in this place. And there's pure stillness. And you've experienced that. Maybe you even experienced it earlier today when we did our meditation. Maybe you touched it for a moment, okay? And Sometimes it's difficult if we don't have a point of reference because we don't know how, where to put it. But you come to silence, you're quiet, you're in this place. And there is no movements inside you any longer. There's no thoughts passing through. There's no emotions rising. It's just still and quiet. And in that pure stillness and silence, a phenomenon takes place. And what happened is the connection between no mind and the heart opens up. You have gone beyond the mind into the silence. And the heart opens. And love reveals itself. But not human love. This love is beyond any love that we ordinarily experience. This is the divine love. This is the presence. The presence is revealing itself. And in that moment, 
when you're in this place, you are like, this is it. I want this. I want to stay in this place all of my life. Because in that moment, you have touched and arrived into your fifth dimensional space and self. Because there is no mind activities and there is no emotions floating through you. You experience something beyond our imagination. You experience the vastness of your own self. The vastness of your own presence. You touch yourself, the true self. Pay attention to this part. I'm going to repeat it again. So it's just not some blah, blah, blah word. Let me jump here. Open up another. It's you come to this place. And you're quiet. And there's no thoughts. There's no story. Your own story is not there of me, me, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And it's quiet. And there's no movements. There's nothing going on. It's just being. You're here. And you have no idea, no thoughts of it. It simply is, and you touch it, you come to it, boom, you touch that. And in that touching, vastness takes over. And that's your fifth dimensional self. You come to that. Which is always a part of you, it's always here. It's a part of who you are. It's just the mind and the emotions get out of the way. So now you're capable of seeing the blue, blue sky. Beautiful, dark blue sky on a sunny day. You can see it because all the, all the clouds and anything that was cluttering your vision is gone. And that's what happens when you touch yourself and come to the purity of yourself. And that's where you experience that you're completely free because the mind is gone. Fear, anxiety, worry, agenda is gone. Do I look good? Is gone. I'm insecure about my weight. Is gone. I'm not smart. Is gone. I'm getting old. Is gone. I'm not good enough. It's not there. What's going to happen to me in the future? Is not there. What am I going to do with my life? Is not there. When am I going to get enlightened is not there. Am I on the right spiritual path? Am I going to meet my soulmate is not there. Everything goes away and you're completely silent, warm, comfortable, present. And you know in that moment that all is well. Everything is in good hands. There's nothing missing. And nothing's going to happen to you. You know it in that moment.
because that is the truth. That is the truth and everything else is blah, blah, blah. The truth is that you are a fifth dimensional being and you are beyond what you perceive that you are. Whatever you think you are is false. It's just false. You're beyond this. You're vast. Your vastness is unimaginable of how vast you are, how powerful you are. And you only come to that understanding when your mind goes into silence, when you enter into the realm of no mind and you land in your fifth dimensional self. You come to the world of 5D. That means pure oneness. No illusion of separation. There is no separation. There is no separation between you and the demons. There is no separation between you and the terrorist. There is no separation between you and the aliens. No separation between you and the virus that is killing people. You are that. You come to that place. Pure oneness with everything. And in that, fear cannot exist. Only freedom. And knowing that everything works out as it has been working out so far beautifully for you. I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm talking about you. You cannot deviate from your own center and go into the Maya. You cannot go into the world and get caught into the world as if the world is real. The moment you go into the world and you get caught into it, you're a mess. Your emotions are all away, all over. Fear, anxiety, worry will take over you and suffering comes with it. You will suffer deeply, especially these days with all the stuff is happening out there. Everything is designed to stimulate your mind to pull you out of your center. You have to come back to your center and stay here. Alert, aware, we're connected, but you remain here. You're centered. Stay in your center. And you will find peace, love, tranquility here within yourself because it's not out there. The world is not going to provide you with false security, illusion of security. It's not there, it's inside yourself. So the more you do the work, the more you stay to on course, on track, with the right teachings, Okay, stick to your teaching. Is the teaching, the teacher you're following, helping your mind to become quiet and you get centered? 
or their teachings is activating your mind and is creating anxiety in you. Okay? Examine it for yourself. The proof is in the pudding. Check it out. Am I getting more calm, centered, collected, and feel I'm living like the Buddha, or I'm becoming an emotional mess, and my mind is running all over? You can examine it for yourself. Is the teaching helping you to become centered or not? If it does, stick to it. If it's making you a mess, then move on to something else. Very simple. It's not rocket science. Keep it very simple. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of teachings out there. Just one moment, excuse me, I need to turn on my Instagram again. There's a lot of blah, blah, blah. Do this, do that, buy this, buy that. Blah, 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 blah. If you don't do this, that's going to happen to you. You're not going to clear your karma. You need to clear your ancestral stuff from the past to become free and, and uh, come to me and I'm going to channel and I'm going to do psychic reading for you. And there's a lot of stuff there. And you just have to navigate through it. What brings you peace? What gives you the tools to remain centered and connected and be reminded that you are love? What brings you to self-love? What type of teachings helping you to recognize how beautiful you are? What kind of teachings helping you to be centered, calm, quiet, get you out of this mess and anxiety? Stick to that. Whatever that is, stick to that one. Because that's the way out. The moment you get involved with things that are activating your mind you're in trouble because it's going to create anxiety nervousness worry uncertainty we're slowly getting close to the end of our um, academy nobody has any questions no what a nice bunch <laughs> these are very strong times and with all the things happening with weather changes and politics and, and the um, w uh, global warming and what's going to happen and blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of fear, anxiety, worry, uncertainty floating around. And with all this uh, availability of the media, uh, with our technology that we're able to get instant news from all over the planet, um, that adds fuel to the fire of people, people who live in fear and anxiety. And uh, it, it just, what it does, it just stirs things up in them. So, you basically need to hear things, you know, let them come in from one ear and let it go out from the other one. 
don't hang on to it. Stay in your center. Stay in this place. Just come back every time something happens, stares you up, you come back to your center. You come back to this place. You remember who you are. And then everything becomes quiet again. Take your time, go to the nature, go for a walk, go sit somewhere and meditate away from the blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, the blah, blah, blah will tear you apart and it will drive you crazy. And quite often there is nothing you can do about it except just eating yourself up. So you want peace, peace is within yourself. You just have to go beyond your busy mind, your thinking mind, the blah, blah, blah that's happening in the mind and, uh, and come back inside. And then every time you come back inside, you see it's ca calm, quiet, nothing's going on. And that's how you also can help other people. Your presence, your calmness will mm. affect the people in your surrounding. Well, nice to see you all. Um, we're coming to the end of our uh, webinar. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. I will be traveling to Europe uh, this Friday. I'm he heading to Versa. And um, if you want to check out the list of my workshops and my events, go to my website, zaratustra.tv. I will be presenting in four different countries, starting with Poland, then I go to Germany, Frankfurt, and then I go to Norway, Hamar, and uh, then I go back to Stockholm in Sweden. And I, so if you feel compelled and drawn to come to one of my events, just uh, go on my website and you can connect with me either with my office directly or uh, contact the local organizers, ask them your questions. If you uh, want to sign up for any of the workshops, we everything is on my website. You can through PayPal, you can just um, pay into the workshop and your seat will be reserved. Um, I do have a an upcoming retreat in Sedona, Arizona, and that's going to be on uh, January 4th to 12th. And uh, I decided to set up another shamanic retreat uh, for starting the new year 2020, which I feel it's going to be a, a new era, uh, transformation in human consciousness. Finally, 2020 is coming and it's going to be a major shift. And uh, where else, what's better than doing it at my home, my power place, Sedona. So we're going to be doing a lot of shamanic rituals and uh, going to a lot of power places. I have a very, very fun and comprehensive uh, program set up for us. So I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be a close, tight uh, group. I only have five seats, uh, spots left. So if you're interested, uh, uh, look into my website. Those of you who I don't know, before you sign up, please write to me and uh, we can talk and maybe have a five, 10 minute uh, uh, Skype uh, interview with one another before you sign up for this retreat. I want to make sure that this is a group that we're all going to get along with each other and we're on the same page. Those of you who I've been with, you know, go ahead and sign up. Uh, you're still welcome to contact me if you need to talk to me. Um, I look forward to seeing you all, sending you lots of love and light. There's not going to be an academy next week, next Wednesday, because I'll be having workshop and seminars in, in Warsaw. But go ahead on my, check out my website and you can see when is the date of the next academy. 
uh, feel free to be to keep connected. You can always write to us either on Facebook or send us an email. Um, look forward to seeing you. This broadcast is going to be posted. Uh, we will be sending this to those who are are connected through the academy to me you will receive a copy of it that we send out every month also the audio part of it is going to be on soundcloud on my podcast uh, as well as uh, a copy of this is going to be on my facebook pages and we're recording it live on instagram i send you a lot of love and light a lot of blessings to you stay in your center stay in your heart don't get out of that place, which is warm, cozy, and quiet, your heart, loving you. Namaste.